Okay, welcome Rosa C. Welcome you two. Please introduce yourselves and tell people a little bit about who you are. Hi, uh, I'm Marie. I'm the singer of Rosa C. And yeah, my zodiac sign is Gemini. Uh, I love animals. I have a baby girl dog and two lovely cats. And yeah, I think I think that describes it pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I am Sylvie, I am the drummer of Rosa C, and I am also the singer of the German punk band Giftrausch. Mm. Uh, my zodiac sign is uh, Leo, mm. and in my spare time I like to draw, I am a kind of creative person, and I am also a member of an association that helps people to get out of prostitution if they want to. Oh, wow! What is that association <laughs> called? Sisters. Sisters, okay. Sisters. <laughs> yeah, where is it based? It's a German based. Mm -hmm. It's in the city uh, Stuttgart in Germany. Hmm. But there are many groups uh, everywhere in Germany. So I'm uh, in Dresden in the kind of group from the association, yes. Well, it sounds like uh, some really good material for rock and roll songs. Uh, yes. <laughs> Not only this. Uh, the most material for our songs are actually our lives and the stuff that goes through our head. Yeah. It's actually mostly in the moment for us. For us. <laughs> uh, so when did each of you realize that you loved rock and metal music and punk? And when did you, uh, when did you think, oh yeah, this is what I want to do? Um, I think I always loved music. Uh, I, I heard stories from my parents that I sang all the time. So they uh, put me to singing lessons since I was eight years old and this for eight years. Yeah. And yeah, I think a really important moment was for me when I was 13. My best friend gave me a CD of, um, it was called a Sub Pop, The Grunge Years. Mm. It was from 1991. And um, there I first heard uh, some grunge bands with a uh, woman or front woman. Um, yeah, like Howl, A7, uh, Babes in Toyland or Dickless. And yeah, after we discovered the CD, we drank a bottle of Prosecco and then we, um, we screamed out loud to every song on the CD. And then I was like, I need a band, I need a band with women and mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> that's amazing i love that story i love courtney love i think that she is like a wonderful icon so unapologetic and so creative and so determined so much attitude and um yes. and then i also love prosecco so i would have liked to be there uh <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, what about you, Sylvie? Um, I remember I was about eight years old when I was in the hospital and my father lent me his old MP3 player. And the first song that was uh, on there was uh, Amy McDonald with uh, This Is Alive. And I vividly remember how I loved her voice, but this was actually the only pop song on this mp3 player the rest was classical hard rock and uh heavy metal like acdc and metallica and this uh, was the first contact i had to this kind of genre and it uh stuck with me since then but it's the genre uh, kind of changed through the years about 12 years old i listened to Green Day and Blink-182 and from 14 to 20 years I spent nearly every weekend uh, at hardcore, uh, local hardcore shows or I spent the time at the rehearsal room from uh, my ex-boyfriend and I always wanted to play in a band. Uh, originally I wanted to play the guitar but uh, I've always been way too impatient mm -hmm. to learn the <laughs> instruments. Which is very sad. I hope I can uh, sometime uh, find a time to uh, learn it again. But now I'm here and uh, adore the, uh, the drums. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would have 
so uh, small still be would have never thought that the dream of becoming a band member actually became true because I never thought that I had the self-confidence for this mm -hmm. and then uh, I met Susie our best player and uh, she motivated both of us to mm -hmm. get our dream oh my god and so we came together <laughs> okay I already love her need to meet her too um yeah it would be great if you would be here but your yeah, English is not the best <laughs> oh, it's, it's okay because it's also uh like a lot of questions for the entire band to answer it's better if it's just like one or two people um yeah and it's really hard to start an all-girls band because so few girls are encouraged to go into music so few can see role models that they relate to and so it's like very sparse to find people who have the time for a band and want to play the same kind of music that you want to play. So quite an accomplishment to put together an all girls band. Uh, so if Rosa C were a movie soundtrack, what would the movie be about? A funny story. We actually uh, got. So we are in a movie, movie soundtrack already with our music. It's a short movie, uh, which is called Isabel, and it's about um, a young woman who kills her mother. But uh, our music was the inspiration for this movie, but it's not exactly a story we would have written. Uh, oh. If we had the opportunity to write a movie for uh, something, it would be kind of American horror story uh, like so 90s dark flair but also with uh, many pink elements because that's our style or the CS always something with uh, feminine rosy pink stuff included but also there would be very much um, inside jokes that only we would find funny for example uh, our bassist Susie I've written that uh, she thinks the story would be about her, how she's fighting herself, but no one is winning. <laughs> okay, is that will be an example. <laughs> wow, that's uh, actually a really great line. <laughs> we are all <laughs> losing to ourselves. Um, yeah, Any anything you want to add to that? No, I don't think so. Um, I think it's pretty accurate. <laughs> okay. So this is a newer question. What have you discovered about yourself in the moments when you had to make difficult sacrifices for your art? Well, I think what we could say, what we both discovered was a new kind of self-confidence because the project started with the mindset that we want to do everything right from the beginning. So we produced merchandise and we started the project. Uh, I never played drums in my life before. I've uh, sat in there for maybe four or three times at a drum set. Uh, you could sing, but for example, our bassist Susie uh, never played the bass before. So uh, we came together and had the idea, let's do it. We want to do merchandise. We want to be a, a cool band. And we want to play a gig in six months. So we had no expertise. And we worked really hard for our first gig in six months. And uh, we got told we were pretty professional. And that was, for me, a really stressful time because I've always asked myself, Am I really good enough? Should I have the confidence to go on stage uh, when I've never really played the drums? Um, but we uh, came together and worked this out and empowered ourselves mm -hmm. through the stage and beyond. Yeah, we always said to each other, you don't have to be perfect. It's just for us. And mm -hmm. I think that was and I think that was the right way. Yeah. That I love that line. Ah. You, you two should be like selling these lines on plaques. Um, <laughs> uh, if you could each have any three pieces of rock memorabilia of all time, what would you like to have? Um, yeah, like um, 
you mean something from another or from another artist or yeah like you could have like um joan jett's like guitar strap mm. or like uh janice joplin's feather boa yeah. um i have to think about our guitar player yoko um because she always wears the nicest sunglasses and she's a big fan of elton john and yeah, I think um, she would like that I say we need the sunglasses from Elton John of the 70s, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, but for me, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not the this material girl either. I have to think about Susie, our bass player, mm -hmm. because she likes uh, Freddie Mercury much. Yeah, I, I, I would. I, I also thought maybe I say I, I like to have the beard from Freddie Mercury. Ah, <laughs> that would be <laughs> like that would certainly be a treasure, and just like have it in a nice like curious glass, like straight yes. right on like your dining room table. Like it would be kind of some kind of moth. <laughs> well, I love that you're the first two to pick things for the other people in your band. So tight band. Um, yes. so what is a comfortable balance for each of you between the rock star who is talking to curious fans and the private individual who doesn't want to share everything? Or another way to ask this question is, what is your favorite thing to talk about with your fans? And what is one thing that you would prefer to never be asked about again? Uh, I think um, because we are, we hadn't that much gigs at all. I think we don't have that much amount or that big amount of fans. So, um, and I think our online presentation uh, is not the best because we don't give a fuck. But <laughs> uh, and our recordings are not representable because we have two guitar players now. And yeah, but <laughs> back to the question. Um, I think um, when we play live, we are really kicking ass, and lots of people are like, uh, "Yeah, wow, um, that's so cool," and we have much of people especially women who come to us after the gig and um, say they really feel what we want to say with our music and that's the best part of it because every time a woman comes to me and says she feels what I want to say I could cry because mm. I want to say so much and I want to do it for them mm. and for us and yeah I hope they never stop doing this and they can ask me anytime they want so I don't have to I um, have to criticize them yeah yeah I, I totally agree I think it's the most wonderful moment when uh, especially women come to me after a show and uh, tell me that they love the energy that they are so happy that we are just there and do our stuff and that they are um fans because we are some kind of idols for them that's so it's uh, i don't know how i should really explain it in english the, my vocabulary is not enough for this but i think it's kind of it uh, comes through but uh to talk about the worst stuff that could happen after a gig uh all these uh unsolicited comments from random dudes <laughs> who want to tell you oh mm, you didn't play really perfect and i could do so much better and yeah that's also happens and i uh couldn't i could have enough of that so i uh friendly said to every guy Fuck off, please. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Roman and and, me and everyone who's uh, a cutie pie, please come to us. And guys, cis guys could please fuck yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> I think a good point uh, is that most of the guys uh, or men don't know that we are doing this for us or for people who who gone through the same things as we are we're going through and mm -hmm. they are like yeah i can do this better or maybe um 
you can do it uh, the next time uh, like this, this and uh, you can play faster and all the things I don't want to do because <laughs> they are like, yeah, I, I can teach you how this whole world works. And um, but we never asked for that. <laughs> We're not doing this for them. Yeah. No. Oh, you guys this are is you. biggest laughs today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to hear this. <laughs> um, and they, yeah, it's uh, one of my friends really got shredded by a bunch of German um, music review, music critics on online recently. And somebody was like, well, Germans don't have any sense of humor, but apparently they do. Because you do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, guys, they don't have a lot of perspective when they come and say that. I I have no idea why they do that. I don't know if what they're trying to do is, like, engage in a conversation about what, like, they like. And they're trying to, like, tell us their opinion. Or <laughs> I don't know what they're doing, but um, they're doing it wrong. And <laughs> so no one to listen I to. I think they are afraid. I think they are afraid they, they had... Hundred of years where they were alone and they could everything they want and they were kind of treated like gods for the mediocre things and now they are women and they see hey, we we could it's uh, better <laughs> mostly oh, <laughs> and then God. they need to say something about it because their little egos need to be treated. <laughs> yeah, they're probably a little jealous of all the positive attention yes. you get from women at the shows. <laughs> yes. Yes, maybe. So, uh, so. They would love if women just came up to them and said, I can just feel everything you're saying in your music. <laughs> um, yes, but lately, time is uh, shifting and time uh, tends to be over for this. Well, you know, I mean, and we've always been there. There would be no rock and roll yeah. without Trixie Smith. The first person to ever record oh. a song that said the words rock and roll was a black American woman. And Led Zeppelin is just sped up R&B. All of the whales and heavy metal come from gospel. Um, that women have always been the seed of rock and roll and the seed of metal and the seed of punk. Uh, Amen. Bands like the Germs wouldn't have been signed without Joan Jett. And uh, so whatever. These guys don't even know anything. So looking back, what was a big decision you made that turned out to be a great choice? Um, I would say for everyone in the band, it would be the same answer with uh, never stop fighting your own demons for the better time which will always come. And um, for me personally, what comes to this uh, would be moving out of my hometown to Dresden. Uh, as I've never met uh, Marie and we would have never uh, uh, have Rosa C. And the greatest decision was getting rid of emotional immature men. Emotional what? Emotional immature men. Oh, so yeah. when they're acting like children. <laughs> You don't need them, uh, yes. obviously, as you as your whole band proves. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think um, for me it was uh, trusting the woman um, who saw me and made me yeah make music after I actually gave it up a long time ago. Hmm. I I never had the self confidence. I always were, were like I'm. I'm at the last row at the concert and I'm just for me or I even don't go there because I'm not worth it. And and I met uh, these guys and they saw me and they were just like, yeah, you have to do it. And then we did it. <laughs> I love it. Aw. Beautiful journey. Okay. So what does it feel like to you when your intuition is waving a flag at you. Uh, kind of a hard one, right? You have to be so in touch with your intuition yes. to like give it yes. an answer. So like for me, for example, um, 
if I start to feel something, I will often turn to logic and say, well, I, I can't just assume that this thing works like that just because I feel this way. Like I need evidence. And then that's actually when I know that what I'm trying to silence is my intuition. When I go, oh, well, I need to have more evidence. It's like, actually, I need to just, you know, make note of this feeling and like trust this and make decisions with this feeling included in it. Because we do live in a world that has turned into this mechanism. And that's not how life works. Life is not a mechanism. Life is a mystery. And so we often ignore uh, our connection to the mystery. That's like what intuition is, right? So for some people, they feel like a little shiver or some people, they feel like something in their like head. And like, you know, if you think of something like you're like, hmm, I, I just saw something over there and I don't know what it is. Like, you know, maybe it's an open door to a bar and then you walked in and it was like a wonderful show or you um, smelled something in the air and you were like, oh, you know what this smells like? This actually smells like my favorite something, something. And then you end up finding this new reward for like just sort of going with it. Well, um, our basis, uh, Susie said that for her, it feels like a gut wrenching feeling that uh, goes through her uh, fingertips mm. from the inside to her fingertips. And uh, our guitarist said it feels like an inner dialogue. So, um, I think what we all have in common is that we are some kind of overthinkers, actually. And how we work with uh, such a situation, I, for myself, when I have an intuition, I feel strangely sure about uh, um, a specific, specific thought, for example. And um, I, for myself, like to be mentally prepared for everything so that I do not get overwhelmed when the chaos erupts, for example. But I'm also a um, very argumentative person. So um, when there's something doesn't sit right with me, I will be loud about it. And uh, so the problem will sooner or later be solved for me. <laughs> when you asked the question I had to think about um, some situations uh, in my life when I were like I was just walking around some random corner in the street uh, near my flat and was like uh, I had to stop and then I was like I want to go left but my stomach said go right go right go right and after all the times I had this in my head, these thoughts, something um, really beautiful happened or something really terrible happened after <laughs> that. But always when I was like, oh my God, do I have to go right or left now? It was really random. It was just two blocks from my flat, you know. Um, but every time I had this in my head, it was like, yeah, something something happened and mm. yeah I think I have a really really strong intuition mm. on uh, some some higher things you know, I don't know yeah the yeah. the just the phrase I think I have a really strong intuition is your intuition telling you that it's really strong and um I just think that like Women are very intuitive. It's like in our nature to take small pieces of information and turn them around in our minds and find meaning in them. It's a part of how we socialize. And we're discouraged from doing that. Uh, and it's like a part of our power. So I think that uh, I ask this question to kind of get the community to think about like saying like, fuck logic i'm gonna follow my gut and my feelings and you know be a woman about it so what is your favorite gear and your favorite stage wear 
Um, I think uh, the most of the band could say, the most members of the band could say that our favorite stage where is uh, whatever Marie uh, latest uh, where? Uh, wardrobe was <laughs> because she has uh, such an amazing style and always <laughs> shares her dresses with us so what uh, she wore yesterday I will wear tomorrow on stage <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's always some kind of um, glitter needs to be with it uh, yeah you know Uh, uh, pink colors, roses, so the, the rosa sea kind of stuff. And my favorite stage gear would be the back for my drumsticks because it also holds uh, my mic and my hearing projection, which would be my most important gear on stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. What about you, Maria? Um. <clears throat> I think uh, for me, it's um, a long microphone cable because I love to jump around and go through the crowd. And yeah, uh, mm. if I have a short cable, nothing works for me. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, but I think that's uh, it. Um, yeah, I, I know I know for Evo, our other guitar player, um, Yoko, um, It's her sturdy shoes. She mm. needs to have shoes that hold her to the to the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the plops. <laughs> yeah, and um, um, for Yoko, I think our other guitar player. It's her uh, Fender guitar cable um, because she has a, a Joey Strummer edition, and it's uh, like pink with uh, Leo plugs. So, mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so you said she adores her short scale bass because she's a kind of small person mm. and she doesn't have uh, the uh, width in her fingers and in her arms. So she got a short scale bass and that's her favorite kind of gear at the moment. And everyone from the string players uh, loves some kind of effect. Yeah, I don't oh, really yeah. understand. <laughs> but, okay. I just, uh, but I just know that Susie said... Uh, she uh, don't like effects that are like um, you have a bass effect and it and after that it doesn't sound like the bass. So mm. this is mm. something she 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 hates. So she yeah. has, she, she loves effects, but it has to be a, a really authentic one. Yeah. In Germany we say it in Bosnum. <laughs> in Germany we say that bass muss ficken. Which means <laughs> the ba uh, the bass must fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard that. German <laughs> language lesson of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> bass must. What was it? The bass must ficken. <laughs> the bass must beaten. Okay, great. Yeah, per perfect. Perfect. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, there is a. I will be repeating that. Um. So. <laughs> <laughs> then when you hit the inevitable flaming hoop, like a wheel falls off the van or your drum drummer breaks their foot or the show gets delayed by weather, what helps you keep a positive mindset? I never have a positive mindset. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she needs us. Yeah. So your band helps But, you keep a positive mindset. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I need them. <laughs> <laughs> It's sometimes of, uh, kind of funny because she jumps around and is really hyper. And um, yeah, the people uh, will never know what I'm going through before gigs. <laughs> uh, it's a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. It's it's really a roller coaster. Yeah. Um, what uh, me keeps on track is. Many things at first actually is the knowledge that there were so many men before us who had no talent, <laughs> who <laughs> did not know what to do, and they did it. So, when they could, why could not we? So, we can uh, do things such as good. Bravo. And the uh, second thing and third thing, it's kind of immersed for me. 
is healing my inner child and my inner angry and depressed teen because mm. I know they would find me so cool if mm. they see me on stage uh, and there comes with it what we meant with uh, the fans that come to us after our shows is I'm always so motivated when some uh, young people stand in front of me and say I like what you do and mm. I want to do it also yeah, yeah. So, yeah you... I think old people also. Yeah, the old people are also cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Because, like, you know what it feels like. You've had the same experience. Like, you know what it's like to be, like, see someone that you can relate to and be like, oh, I can do this. And um, yes. uh, a great quote from one of the other rock goddesses, Anne from Rope, she was texting me and she was like, the one thing I wish I could tell all the girls is that every time I try to audition a guitarist, some guy who has no idea what he's doing shows up to audition and plays horribly, completely confidently. And these girls just need to go out there. They're already better than all these boys. They just yes. don't have the attitude. Attitude, girls. I want to see attitude. A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, okay, what is a performance memory that you'll never forget? Um, do you want to answer it first? Uh, yeah, um, I think uh, at our first gig, um, I was yeah really stressed out, <laughs> as always before it. Um, and um, it was a, a pretty small venue, but it was really crowded. And um, there was like a platform in front of the uh, stage. And uh, yeah, in the middle of our set, I was ho hopping from it into the crowd and was interacting with them. And I was so angry um, because we had a, a very angry song playing <laughs> and it was so cool. And uh, I, I never thought that I would do this and I never thought that I would do this at our first gig. Mm. And um, after that, no one believed me uh, that this was our first gig because oh. of that. <laughs> that. That was pretty cool. <laughs> I will never forget that. Yes. It. it was uh, for every band member except uh, Yoko because she didn't play it uh, much shows before, but and uh, Susie and Yoko, no, Ivo, answered that uh, their very first gig with the other bands uh, was the most memorable uh, performance. And for me, it also was uh, my, my, my two first gigs uh, with my other punk band Gift Rush because we played in an original wrestling ring. Hmm. because the uh, event was a wrestling event and it was it it was underground it was cool it was crowded people worked out it was so nice and then uh, our first gig because i remember when we came from the backstage and we needed to walk to the stage and all the people so many people so friends people that i've known people that are unknown stand in front of the stage and we needed to get through them and that was a kind of uh busy <laughs> and then uh, seeing how uh marie rocks out and her energy and we've only been uh, together before in the rehearsal room and then i was, see her energy live on stage and this was some extra gimmick where I thought, well, okay, now we really need to do this further. Yes, where I've seen what she could do. <laughs> we need to get through this. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> Maria, I look forward to when your ego catches up to your ability. So um, I love that. Okay, so all of these stories are really great and wonderful for the community because that uh i think that like you said like before your first gig it's like quite scary 
And so it's great that you all said, well, actually, the first gig was the most memorable. So after a long day of recording, touring, or working out the kinks, what is your favorite way to take care of yourself? Oh, I don't know. I really don't know. Mm. Uh, cuddling with the cats yeah. and the dog. Oh. Cuddling with the cats, the dog, and yes. taking a long bath. Yeah. Yeah, same. I would, I would also uh, enjoy a bathtub together with a nice joint and watching a movie. The sad part is I don't have a bathtub. Oh, but no. <laughs> <laughs> we can share this. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, yeah, some kind of just chilling. Yeah, drinking a glass of vino or yeah. Prosecco. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, okay, so do you have any new announcements? Uh, we are actually working on our first album. Um, and we are planning our first tour. Yeah. Uh, we want to record our um, first long player um, in February. And then we'll see when it comes out <laughs> but um yeah no pressure no pressure um but yeah. we're very excited to show everyone the songs with two guitars and how much more power we have now and yeah and everything more professional because now even more yeah, even <laughs> more that's right yeah. that is right yes <laughs> we have just the two EPs that are really um punk yeah and i think we're more more glam now yeah. okay. a bit more glam, the glam punk mm -hmm. comes through yeah yeah oh that's yeah. fun yeah. Yeah. glam metal is so <laughs> fun it's a good time always a great show with glam metal so glam metal meets punk. That's going to be awesome. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's also so great to keep in mind that like the production of your music is when you say it's finished because it is art and people want it, you know, they always want it yesterday. They always want it, you know, before it's ready and doesn't have to be ready for anyone, as you say, but for yourselves. So where can everyone listen to your music and how can they follow what you do? Uh, we have um, Instagram, Rosa C um, Band, Rosa C Band, or I think it's Rosa C Underline Band. Yeah. Rosa C Underline Band, and um, <laughs> that's what it's called. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wait, and... here, let me look at it right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's Rosa C Underscore Band. Yeah. Yes, and a school, that's what yeah. it's Yeah, and then um we have a band camp. Um yeah, I think it's also called Rosa C Band. We are not that much online. <laughs> yeah, but um uh on Spotify you can find our music too. Yeah. Rosa C. Rosa C. The most important part about is is uh Rosa C is uh, not without uh the the uh, space between it it's oh, okay. rosa c there's no yeah, space between it of, uh, the rosa c um like the latin word yeah you know <laughs> i yeah uh well don't worry it's, it's, we it. will we'll have all the links available for everyone yeah. so they will be thank able you to so find much it. thank <laughs> you <laughs> okay and so now we end the episode the same way as all of them end with the vinyl game i'll hold up two pieces of vinyl and you will pick one that you want to say something about or ask a question about? Stevie Nicks or Pat Benatar? Um, Stevie Nicks, definitely. Yeah. What do you um, love about Stevie? Um, I love her attitude, her voice, and yeah, I I love what she says, especially on her solo things, because um, it's so much um yeah it's pretty much empowerment for me uh, yeah yeah i don't know what to say Ooh. i agree i i can't say anymore so yeah. that's 
Um, I think that's the one with uh, the edge of 17, or am I right? Uh, yes, it is. This is Belladonna. Yeah. It has Belladonna, yeah. kind of woman, stop dragging my heart around. Think about it after the glitter fades, edge of 17, how still my love, leather and lace, outside the rain, and the highwayman. Um, my favorite life lesson from Stevie Nicks. Uh, okay, so... She was in Fleetwood Mac and they released their first album and they all made a lot of money from that Fleetwood Mac album. And Stevie Nicks turned around and opened her own record label and she produced all her own albums, which made her very rich. And she, um, this album was in the top 200 for several years. I think it was three years in the top 200. So she made a lot of money. And uh, Fleet the other people in Fleetwood Mac did feel some kind of way about it because, you know, she did that. She, that was very smart. And uh, great businesswoman. That's what I love about Stevie Nicks myself. So, yeah. Betty Davis or Bronze? That's amazing, Betty Davis. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to go with Betty Davis. Betty yeah. Davis, yes. Betty Davis. Do you, uh, are you very familiar with her or do you want me to tell you a little bit? No, I, I'm not familiar, but I love these silver over knees. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in a combination with her, with her hairstyle, I love it. <laughs> I've, uh, I had her in my playlist sometime, but I got no real connection to her, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. So she uh, married Miles Davis. She was 20 years younger than him. And uh, these songs are like the vocals are very scratchy. There's a lot of rhythm to the music. And it's, I think, like a little bit punk in its nature. Uh, she also was an international model. She, I think she lived in Germany for a while. I'm pretty sure she also lived in London. And she did covers for like Vogue and all the high end magazines. Um, yeah, so she put these albums out. Nasty Gal is a very famous song by her. And um, they are dirty songs. They have some dirty lyrics. They are very rock and roll. Mm -hmm. I have to hear it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Santa. I think I will look after this. Santa or Burning Witches? Um, burning Witches because I... I, I never a band. <laughs> I never really listened to them, but I know there are it's it's, it's a whole band of women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're pretty new. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They are. And uh who they are. Yeah. So um I got to see them in Mexico City myself. They are very tight and very professional. And they tour all the time and they've I've n I don't know what, if they have like a policy about it, but I've never seen them book a show without another female, uh, without another band with at least one female member. So they seem mm -hmm. to be like very active in the community, and nice. they are they are just very traditional, straightforward power metal. I would say. Okay, here's one that I think is hard. Coven. Oh, Coven. Coven. Really that Coven. easy? Not Queen Yeah, yeah. I saw them live uh, in like like six years ago. Uh, just jinx, but it was so powerful. And yeah, I I love them. I love them so much. And I think I think Black Sabbath steal all of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Sorry. No. <laughs> hmm? this is like my oh, favorite. Geez. This is my favorite heavy metal lore. So, you know, Jinx Dawson, she was already touring with Coven in the 60s. Her family had a connection to the occult, uh, like a generational connection. And she was putting up uh, the devil horns, as she calls them. I'm, I think like Dio called them something else, actually. And... Uh, Oh, yeah, he called it the evil eye, and he would do it like this. But Jinx was the one holding it up like this. And and Dio absolutely did it like this, like this. Okay? And so he was in a band playing bass 
The band was called Elf at the time that Jinx was already doing this. So he was, I guess, playing bass like this. So um, anyway, her album, this album was taken out of rotation because when uh, the Manson murders occurred in L.A., there was the satanic panic in the United States and everything satanic was getting like uh, censored. So they took this album out of rotation, but it had made its way to Birmingham where a guy in a band called the Polka Tolk Blues Band heard this and renamed himself after her bassist, Oz Osborne. He named himself Ozzy Osborne and he named him his band after the first track on this album, Black Sabbath. So, yeah. yeah. So then Ozzy Osborne had to go to court to defend his material and say, it's a t- it, uh, we can write satanic rock songs, freedom of speech, man. And um, Jinx never got to be in a televised court uh, like hearing about like whether or not her album should be played. So it was just a big like for the boys. Um, but anyway, thanks to the Internet, you know, that which is done in the darkness shall come to light and it's coming to light. I think it, yeah. it uh, out. I don't know if you ever uh, heard our first EP because the intro is a homage to the Black Sabbath. Oh, nice. Yeah. I will have to <laughs> um, Girl School or Share? Girl School for me. Another well. all girls band. Yeah. 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 And I know our uh, guitar player, Evo, really loves them. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, they, uh, toured with, uh, some big names, like, um, oh, let me, can't think of his band name right now, Just I just think it's hilarious. I'm so focused on music made by women that I always forget the names of men in bands and what their bands are called. I have no, no idea who these guys are. That's such I a only good time. Know- <laughs> You don't you don't have to listen to men to listen to metal. You can actually just listen to metal made by women. There is enough of it. If anybody needs help, I have a playlist. So yeah, so that is it. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. It was a pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.